Hello, hello friends. Kim here and welcome on back to my happy place. In today's video, guys, we are going to be taking another look at some books. So as I mentioned to you guys before, books and reading are just an absolute passion that I have. I've loved reading since I was a little girl and you know, I was thinking about it some weeks ago and the point of my channel is it is a diamond painting channel. It will remain a diamond painting channel, you guys, but my channel name is also My Happy Place. And it is not just diamond paintings that make me happy. There are three things that bring me a lot of joy in terms of hobbies. Diamond painting is one, reading and books is another and my third is my scented candle collection home fragrance all of that that is also something else that i spend a fair amount of money on and that brings me a lot of joy so i have been thinking that i would like to bring in my other hobbies onto this channel as well but i will not do it in such a way that it becomes the primary focus of the channel and I will also not do it in such a way that it replaces any diamond painting content. So I will continue to release two diamond painting videos every week. And then you will be seeing the odd book video, which I know some of you are excited about. Some of you are not, but that is okay. <laughs> you will be seeing the odd book video here and there. I will be doing book reviews and sharing my thoughts with you on my recent reads and my recent finishes. But I will also be doing hauls with you. And today's video is a haul video. But before we get into that, just to finish off on what I was saying. So I will be bringing you the odd book video. And I'm thinking of also bringing you the odd candle slash home fragrance video. I will see how that goes. Um, I do regularly buy candles. And so it might be nice to just tell you guys or show you guys what I've bought and to, you know, discuss fragrance notes with you and all of that. I know a lot of people who do diamond painting and a lot of people who read also do enjoy candles and home fragrance. So that is something else that might make an appearance on my channel. But like I say, it is not going to um, become just a general whatever type of channel. It is going to remain a diamond painting channel, but I do want to also extend my videos in terms of just doing a few extra things every month that bring me joy and that I'm hoping will bring you joy. So on that note, you guys, today's video is a haul video. I am going to be showing you seven. Seven thriller paperbacks that I have recently bought. Um, and that I'm obviously extremely excited to read. So as I mentioned before, I really do gravitate towards thrillers, crime novels, um, mysteries, suspense, legal thrillers, all of that. And so that is what I'm going to be sharing with you today. Like I say, today there are seven books. All of them are books. Oh guys, I just love an actual book. The look of it, the feel of it, opening a book, seeing the actual pages, the smell of it. I just love reading actual books as opposed to Kindle books. I do also do or get through quite a lot of audio books every month. Well, not a lot, actually, probably one or two a month in terms of audio books. But I do love to read with my actual eyeballs. And so today's video is going to be exactly that. I'm going to show you seven thrillers that I have recently bought. Um, in this pile of seven, there are two legal thrillers and then there are five sort of general thrillers slash psychological thrillers slash mysteries that I'm really excited to read. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the covers. I'm going to give you the book title, the author, and then I'm going to read to you from the, the blurb at the back of the book so that you guys could see if it's something that you would perhaps be interested in. So without further ado, guys, let's get on with this. This will be episode three in my Escaping Reality series. And like I say, it is a book haul. It is not a book review video. Okay, gang. So starting off with the first book that I want to share with you. Um, this one is called The Dive. And the author is Sarah Ox. Just look at this picture, you guys. Tell me which of you would love to be in this setting right now. <laughs> I know that I would be. This is... Well, based on the blurb and what I've read about this book, this is Thailand. I have or an island in Thailand, I should say. This actual island, just that little thing is not Thailand, but I think you know what I mean. <laughs> 
So this is an island in Thailand. This photo is from Thailand. I have traveled to Thailand myself. I have um, done an island holiday there with my better half and we went for three weeks and I absolutely loved every minute of it. So yes, guys, excited for this read. So let me just read to you what the blurb on the back of the book says. So this is what you can expect from this one. Escape to Paradise. Scuba drive diving instructor Cass leads her students out for their first dive off the beautiful coast of Koh Sun, Thailand's world-famous party island. It's supposed to be a life-changing experience, but things quickly spiral out of control. Leave your secrets behind. By the time she gets back to shore, one of her students is dead, another badly injured, and she knows that her idyllic life is about to be smashed to pieces on the rocks. But don't get lost forever. Because someone is making sure that backpackers never leave paradise, one murder at a time. And Cass has a feeling she might be next. So guys, I mean, that one just sounds fun. It sounds, I mean, it just sounds like the type of thing I'd like to read because I absolutely love the setting. Um, an island sort of thriller. Yes, sign me up. Set in a country that I've traveled to and that I absolutely adore. So yes, sign me up double. So that is the first thriller, you guys, that I wanted to share with you today. Also, just love the cover. Obviously, I've shown you already. Beautiful cover. Love this one. Okay, so moving on. The next book that I want to share with you is this one. No one saw a thing. The author is Andrea Mara. So let me read to you what this one says, and then we can have a quick, or I can just discuss with you what appeals to me about this one. So right, this is what the blurb says. No one saw it happen. You stand on a crowded tube pla platform in London. Your two little girls jump onto the train ahead of you. As you try to join them, the door slides shut and the train moves away, leaving you behind. Everyone is lying. By the time you get to the next stop, you've convinced yourself that everything will be fine. But you soon start to panic because there aren't two children waiting for you on the platform. There's only one. Someone is to blame. Has your other daughter got lost, been taken by a passing stranger? Or perhaps the culprit is closer to home than you think. No one is telling the truth. And the longer the search continues, the harder she will be to find. Oh, you guys, tell me that one does not sound like an absolute cracker. I... Oh, just actually reading that blurb makes me feel stressed. <laughs> I mean, can you actually imagine that happening? I've been to London. I know how the tube story works there. And I can, you know, there is a part of me that can almost imagine a situation where it's very crowded. You're trying to get your kids onto the train. You don't get on in time and the doors close and off the train goes. And so I can't just imagine being a mother and that happening to you. And then dashing to the next station and there stands your one daughter and not your other one. Oh, so I just think the back or the blurb of this book sounds absolutely amazing. I can't wait to read it. You'll actually see some of the comments on the front of the book here by other authors. Liz Nugent said, probably the most suspenseful book I will read all year. So, I mean, that's already a testament, you know. And then we have another one over here from Lo Louise O'Neill. She says, twisty, clever, impossible to put down. So yeah, guys, that is the second thriller that I wanted to share with you. Another one that just, uh, just really I can't wait to get to. Then for book number three in this whole video, this is an author that I adore. I have read a number of his books. This is Steve Kavanagh. This is in fact apparently a standalone. A lot of the books that Steve Kavanagh writes are part of a series. Um, they're sort of a legal, a legal type of series. This one is not. This one is more of a thriller, I think, from what I can gather. And it's a standalone. So now this one is called Kill For Me, Kill For You. So what the front of the book says is, she will kill your worst enemy. All you have to do is kill hers. Oh, <laughs> Giving me all the feels, you guys, giving me all the feels. Okay, so the blurb on the back is quite short, so let me just read this one to you. Um, this says, one dark evening in New York City, two strangers meet by chance. Over drinks, Amanda and Wendy realize they have so much in common. They both feel alone, they both drink alone, and they both desperately want revenge against the two men who destroyed their families. Together, they have the perfect plan. If you kill for me, I'll kill for you. Ah, <laughs> ha, 
Sign me up. I can't wait. This one sounds like such a novel idea and just such a thrilling concept. And I can't wait to see how the story unfolds. I mean, it obviously sounds like, could that ever actually possibly happen? But I mean, we do know we have to suspend disbelief, right? When we read fiction novels and especially thrillers. But oh my gosh, I just love the sound of that one. Like, could you actually meet a stranger and over too many drinks decide that you're going to kill for each other? I mean, what an interesting concept. So yes, guys, I could not wait to pick this one up. I had heard so much about it. And so when I found this one in my local bookstore, like I say, I just knew I had to read this one. Um, then what I'm going to share with you is the next two that I've got here. These two are both legal thrillers. And then the two that I've kept for the very end are my two most... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? They are the books that I am most anxious to read, anticipated. Let me say that. These are the two books that I have been anticipating and excited about for the longest time. So we will do those last. For now, what I'm going to show you are these legal thrillers. So this first one is called The Defense and the author is Christina Delcher. On the front, it says the one decision you can't take back. Now, guys, I am a sucker for legal thrillers and legal dramas. I absolutely love them. I read them often. I find when a legal drama or a legal thriller is done really well, especially the courtroom scenes, I find that I just fly through books like that because I absolutely love the courtroom scenes. I love watching the intelligent educated barristers and lawyers fighting with each other. I love how they question witnesses. I love the twists and turns. So I am always ready for a great legal thriller. So if you guys happen to know about any legal thrillers that blew you away, please definitely comment down below in the comments because I'd love to read them. But for now, like I say, let's take a closer look at the sentence. Let me read to you what it says on the back. So here we go. Prosecutor Justin, ba uh, not Justin, it's Justine, sorry. Prosecutor Justine Boucher has only asked for the death penalty once in a brutal murder case. In so doing, she put her own life on the line because if the convicted are later found innocent, the lawyer who requested the execution will be sentenced to death. Justine has no doubt that the man she sent to the chair was guilty until now. Presented with evidence that could prove his innocence, Justine must find out the truth before anyone else does. Her life depends on it. So guys, I mean, that one sounds like great fun. Not to get into any discussions about the death penalty, because that is what I would consider a political discussion. <laughs> and I'm not going to go down that, that road. All I can tell you is um, I'm in South Africa, obviously. We do not have the death penalty here. We have not for a very, very long time. So... I mean, I love reading stories where the, the death penalty is involved just because I find it so interesting and I find the moral debate around the death penalty very interesting. You know, the other thing to note about me is that I live in a country with an exceptionally high crime rate. Um, unfortunately, our crime rate is one of the highest in the world. And so, you know, a lot of people in South Africa have been affected by crime and very often very violent crime, unfortunately. In this country, you can be killed for a cell phone. And so, you know, that obviously does sway one's feelings about the death penalty because, you know, if you live in a country where crime is not a big deal, I think it's easier to um, take a more moral sort of viewpoint or stance on the death penalty. But that said, I love reading books about the death penalty. I love hearing all the different uh, sides of the story. So, yes, I cannot wait to read that one. Another one that I'm immensely excited for. Right, guys. And then the second legal thriller that I have to share with you in this video is called The Trial. Um, Rob Rinder is the author. I nearly said the artist. <laughs> I'm so used to doing my diamond painting videos that I nearly said the artist. But anyway, the author is Rob Rinder. This is again, like I said, this is another um, legal thriller. And this one on the front says... One murder, one impossible case, who is guilty? So basically, the back of the book, the blurb says this. Murder and deception in the Old Bailey. Um, meet Adam Green, misfit, purveyor of justice, barrister in training. When hero policeman Grant Cliveden dies from a poisoning in the Old Bailey, it threatens to shake the country to its core. The evidence points to one man. Jimmy Knight has been convicted of multiple offences before and defending him will be no easy task. 
not least because this is trainee barrister Adam Green's first case. But it will quickly become clear that Jimmy Knight is not the only person in Cliveden's past with an axe to grind. The only thing that's certain is that this is a trial which will push Adam and the justice system itself to the limit. And then we have a quote here from Tony Parsons to say, I have not enjoyed a legal thriller this much since Grisham's The Firm. So yeah, like I said, not too much more to say about this one, you guys. Obviously, like I mentioned, it's a legal thriller. I love legal thrillers. I can't wait to get to this one. Um, this one doesn't really seem to have any aspects on the more moral sort of side of it. But hopefully this is just going to be a rollicking good legal thriller and like I said obviously excited to get to this one. Now on your screen are my two most anticipated reads of this haul. These are the two books that the minute I saw them in the bookshop it was not even a question as to whether I was going to buy them. I must tell you guys these two sound absolutely amazing and completely up my alley. I love serial killer stories and when they are done well not only do they freak the bejesus out of me, but I just am so entertained. I can read books that are very dark, you guys. I can go dark in my reading. And I don't mean dark in terms of tons of violence or gore. I just mean dark in terms of concepts and what goes on. And so the whole serial killer trope for me is not something that I run away from. In fact, I run towards most books that are about serial killers. So right, both of these are about serial killers. Let me start off with this one. This is The Quiet Tenant. Ooh, how do I pronounce? I think, is this a French name? Clemence Michelon. So I would say this author's name is Clemence Michelon. The book is called The Quiet Tenant. I've heard a lot of amazing stuff about this book, you guys, so I cannot wait. I mean, I'm saying this about all of these books, but I genuinely can't wait to read this one. So let me read the blurb to you, um, and then you're going to see how enticing this one sounds. Right. Aidan Thomas is a hardworking family man and a respected member of his community. He's the kind of man who always lends a hand and has a good word for everyone. He's also a kidnapper and a serial killer who has murdered eight women. And there's a ninth, a woman he calls Rachel, imprisoned in a backyard shed where she fears for her life. When Aidan's wife dies, he and his 13-year-old daughter Cecilia are forced to move. Aidan has no choice but to bring Rachel too, introducing her to Cecilia as a family friend who needs a place to stay. He knows that after five years of captivity, Rachel is too frightened of the consequences to attempt to escape. But Rachel is a fighter and a survivor. And when Emily, a local restaurant owner, develops a crush on the handsome widower, she finds herself drawn into Rachel and Cecilia's orbit, coming dangerously close to discovering Aidan's secret. Now, I think this one just sounds so divine, but listen to this, guys, because the, the blurb finishes off by saying this. The quiet tenant explores the psychological impact of Aidan's crimes on the women in his life through the voices of Rachel, Cecilia and Emily, and the bonds between these women that give them the strength to fight back. Both a searing thriller and an astute study of trauma, survival, and the dynamics of power, The Quiet Tenant is an electrifying thriller by a major talent. Oh, hello. <laughs> give me this book in chunks. You know what I, I like about the sound of this one? Is that it's not just a simple fiction, read it and have fun and whatever. It actually sounds as if it's going to go slightly deeper. It's actually going to assess the effect that violence and crime and the actions of a serial killer have on the woman around that person. So, you know, you've got a, you've got a person who's been kidnapped. So you've got the victim. Then you've got the victim's daughter, and then you've got a third party who develops a, a um, no, not the victim's daughter, sorry. You've got the victim, you've got the serial killer's daughter, and then you've got a third party who develops a crush or feelings for the serial killer. And this story is going to be told through their eyes. And I think that really has the potential to be absolutely, I mean, riveting. And also to go a little bit deeper than just a sort of surface level thriller. And I must tell you, apparently this other book, okay, so let's move on to this other book. Apparently this other book is exactly that as well. This book is getting absolutely rave reviews. 
because this book is the same thing. It's actually a book that focuses on the victims of serial killers and of a specific serial killer. And it brings to light their story. And apparently it really is about why do serial killers become so notorious and so infamous, but yet their victims are forgotten about and you never know anything about them. And so these two books, both of them just seem to deal with serial killers, but on a much deeper level. This one I must tell you. Okay, so this is called Bright Young Woman. The author is Jessica Knoll. Now this one apparently, like I've already said, is getting absolutely rave reviews. I don't know anyone who has read this book and hasn't loved it because this one is loosely based on the story of Ted Bundy. Now this is a fiction. It is not a true crime. It is not about Ted Bundy himself and his victims and his crimes, but it is loosely based on his story. So let me read to you what the, what the blurb says. Right. Um, sorry, let me just try and get it focused on the screen for those of you who want to read along with me. It's a little bit difficult because of the color of the print. Um, but anyway, let's go. January 1978, Tallahassee, when sorority president Pamela Schumacher is startled awake at 3 a.m. by a strange sound, she's shocked to encounter a scene of implausible violence, two of her friends dead and two others maimed. Thrust into a terrifying mystery, Pamela becomes estranged in a crime, oh sorry, Pamela becomes entangled in a crime that captivates public interest for more than four decades. So then we move on to this next section in the blurb, February 1974. On the other side of the country, Tina Cannon has found peace in Seattle after years of hardship. When Ruth, her best friend, goes missing from Lake Sammamish State Park in broad daylight, surrounded by thousands of beachgoers on a beautiful summer day, Tina devotes herself to finding out what happened to her. When Tina hears about the tragedy in Tallahassee, she suspects the same man is responsible. Determined to make him answer for what he did to Ruth, she travels to Florida on a collision course with Pamela and one last impending tragedy. Bright Young Woman is an extraordinary novel inspired by the real-life sorority targeted by America's first celebrity serial killer in his final murderous spree. So there you basically get confirmation of what I just said to you at the beginning. It doesn't specifically um, mention the name Ted Bundy, but it is Ted Bundy. I've read up a lot about this book and have read things by, you know, um, articles where the author has been interviewed and so on. And it is loosely based on the Ted Bundy story. But like I say, again, this is really supposed to be focusing on the women, the victims and giving them a voice in you know, all this violence in the world today against women, so much violence. And I think this book um, is one that really strives to put things across from the other point of view. And I also just thought, I mean, when I was reading this, you know, just, just listen to these words. America's first celebrity serial killer. I mean... <laughs> Doesn't that just say so much about what is wrong with our society today? You know, that celer uh, that serial killers become celebrities. But it is true, this does happen and this is what they become. And I mean, I'm also guilty, I must say, because I'm such a fan of watching true crime documentaries when Netflix or any other um, streaming device or anything releases a serial killer story, I'm always there glued to the screen, you know. I'm actually not a big TV watcher in general, but if you're going to put crime stuff on the TV, I will be there and I will be hanging on every word of it. So, so yes, you guys, those are the seven thrillers that I am sharing with you today. Just putting them one by one back onto the screen so you can have a look at their covers. So excited for all of these. Like I say, these last two that I mentioned are my most anticipated reads of of this latest haul and then we have these two putting them onto the screen now the trial and the sentence which are the latest legal thrillers that i picked up then we have steve kavanagh's standalone kill for me kill for you we have no one saw a thing which is the poor mother who whose kids get whisked off on the train and only one resurfaces after that and then lastly, obviously, The Dive, which is this thriller set in Thailand, in the idyllic paradise of Thailand, I must tell you, because it is an absolute paradise. 
Anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you are a bookworm, thank you so much for joining me. Please do tell other bookworm friends of yours about, you know, these videos. Even if they aren't diamond painting fans, they can come and check out the channel. There will be book videos once or twice a month. And it would be so nice to grow the viewership of these videos because we'll be able to chat more about books. And I love interacting with you guys about books as well. So... On that note, guys, I'm going to say thank you so much for joining me today and happy reading, guys. Bye.